DJ Hey, this is Vespers. I'm a dance music producer, live performer, and music educator. This is the first in a series of three videos about Sugarbyte's WOW filter box. In this first tutorial, we're going to cover the features, then in two and three, we're going to get to see it in action. Let me first start off by saying this is my go-to filter. I used to be all about the Ableton filter, but this one has totally replaced it in all of my production lately. As you can see from the interface, it's very clean and simple, but don't be fooled. This is a powerful audio sculpting weapon. Let's take a peek at it. The first thing I'll point out is it comes with a bunch of high quality presets. So you don't need to necessarily know all the ins and outs of the filter to be able to use it to get some excellent sounds. Next, it's got a variety of different filter types to choose from, a lot more than most standard filters. We've got a 12 decibel high pass, 24 decibel high pass, 12 and 24 decibel band passes, low pass, a comb filter, and a band reject or notch filter, and we have these band crusher and LF crusher, which are combinations between filters and lo-fi or redux or bit crushing effects. Next we have vowel mode, and this is something that I've seen that's pretty unique to Sugarbytes. They also use a vowel mode in one of their synthesizers called Unique, which I'm a huge fan of, and it turns the filter into basically a vowel filter. You can scroll up and down to select the different types of vowels here, and your cutoff knob will actually select the mix between the different vowels. So it gets a really different sound than most filters. It gives it kind of that vocal, nasal character to the filter. This filter definitely has a unique and different sound to most filters I've ever heard before. Another feature I love with this filter is the overdrive. Overdrive is handy to have on any element, especially in dance music, because I tend to use a lot of distortion. And this overdrive is the crunchiest, best sounding distortion. I actually use this on a bunch of elements in my tracks, even if I'm not using the filter, just to add buzz to it. I actually like it a lot more than Ableton's built-in saturator or overdrive functions, and it's better sounding than any of the other overdrive that I've ever seen in a filter before. So absolutely love the overdrive feature. And we have a gigantic cutoff knob. It's great just to be able to see where your filter's at, but also helps visually to add to the appeal of the plugin. Then on the right we have the resonance knob. And this is a self-oscillating filter, so when you crank the resonance up nice and high, the filter will actually start to oscillate and create its own tone itself. Now we'll move down into the modulation matrix. And this is where stuff really gets fun. So we have a couple of different options here. We have an envelope follower that will read the incoming audio stream and modulate parameters based on the audio signal. We have an LFO and we have a user controlled step sequencer. Now to modulate any parameter you simply right click on it and it brings up this window where you have the ability to control the degree of modulation for any of the parameters. If you want to reset you just click the reset button and it's important to also point out you can MIDI learn any of these parameters here as well. So really important if you're not using a program like Ableton that has built-in MIDI learning, this actually has the ability to very easily and simply MIDI learn, which is important for hands-on control. So say for example we want the LFO to be controlling our filter cutoff, we simply drag this up and you can see very easily visually right there that the LFO is controlling the filter cutoff point. And you can have it modulate up or down for different sounds. And you can modulate virtually any parameter on here. Any of these parameters you see blue on, you can modulate. So you can modulate the master to give side chaining effects. You can modulate the mix. You can modulate resonance, filter cutoff, any of these other modulation settings like LFO rate, things like that. In the LFO, we have the ability to choose from different waveforms. And we have the ability to control the rate and as always it lists the actual rate below so you can tell what sync it'll be at with your sequencer. In the envelope follower you can tune it to a specific frequency range if you want it to follow a, a specific element of the incoming audio signal and you have attack, release, and gain controls. In the step sequencer you can control its beat synced tempo, smoothing, gives little crossfades at the beginning and end, and the direction. 
And finally, at the bottom, we have a mix control, which I find is really useful on any plugin. If you're using it as an insert, it gives you the ability to mix the wet and the dry signal, as well as a master knob. So it gives you an additional gain stage where you can trim out the volume. So for example, you know, I, a lot of times I start to add quite a bit of distortion. That increases the amplitude of your signal, and oftentimes you want to back off the master volume. So it's handy to be able to do that without having to decrease the volume of the track or add in a gain plugin of some sort. So that's our first tutorial on Sugarbyte's WOW filter box. Just wanted to show you the interface. Coming up next, you'll be able to see it in action.